I don't believe that the Jewish state and modern Zionism would have been possible without Christian Zionism. Christian Zionism. Christian Zionism. The Jewish state and modern Zionism would have been possible without Christian Zionism. I think that uh, the many Christian supporters of the rebirth of the Jewish state and the ingathering of the Jewish people in the 19th century made possible the rise of Jewish Zionism. a Jew, I would be a Zionist. My father pointed out to me, I did not need to be a Jew to be a Zionist. For I am. Israel is essential to the security of Jews worldwide. I have said to people when they ask me, if this capital crumbled to the ground, the one thing that would remain is our commitment to our aid and I don't even call it aid, our cooperation with Israel. That's fundamental. I'm delighted to present my latest book, In Defense of Israel. This book will expose the sins of the fathers and the vicious abuse of the Jewish people. In Defense of Israel will shake Christian theology. It scripturally proves that the Jewish people as a whole did not reject Jesus as Messiah. It will also prove that Jesus did not come to earth to be the Messiah. It will prove that there was a Calvary conspiracy between Rome, the high priest and Herod, to execute Jesus as an insurrectionist too dangerous to live. Since Jesus refused by word and deed to claim to be the Messiah, how can the Jews be blamed for rejecting what was never offered? Read it in this shocking expose in defense of Israel. A strange and mysterious preference for sexual relations in public rather than private. That people would have sexual intercourse in public like donkeys, he said. That's coming. A strange and mysterious fascination with having sexual relations in a motor car parked in a park so people passing by can take a look it's happening already and it's coming from one direction it's coming from those who liberated Jerusalem and then brought Banu Israel back to Jerusalem, to the Holy Land, who presided over the creation of the State of Israel and who have protected Israel until Israel could grow to become a superpower and be poised to take over the rule over the world. Those who today rule the world are a mysterious dual alliance. Dual. It is a mysterious Jewish Christian alliance which has emerged in Europe and which has spread its tentacles around the world. They are the ones who are bringing the Chabbat to such an extent that it is now almost prevailing in the world. And so as we see the filth spreading, we know that the moment is at hand for the destruction of the Arabs. Arab. When the destruction of the Arabs takes place, the critics of this book would be silenced. <laughs> but I want to take you now back to that spot in the Caucasus Mountains because we want to fine-tune our 
attempt to identify Gog and Magog. It is not sufficient to say that Gog and Magog are the European Christians and European Jews. No, because amongst the European Christians and European Jews, there will be those who become Muslims, there will be those who are our friends and allies. Do not make the mistake of declaring of all Jews that they are your enemies and all Christians, they are your enemies. That will be quite foolish. An American woman went to Israel and stood up in front of an Israeli bulldozer to protect a Palestinian home. And the bulldozer ran over her. The media, of course, buried it. Can you say of that woman that she is your enemy? Can you say of that woman that she is Gog and Magog, but she is white and she is American? So we we would have peanuts in our heads if we make a blanket statement all white people or all Americans or all Christians or all Jews not at all don't fall in that trap let's fine tune to try look to locate Gog and Magog we have to go to the Caucasus mountains And there at the Caucasus Mountains, we have to look for a people with power. They have to be a people whose power was greater than any other power in the world at that time. We have to look for a people who will eventually be moving from that northern area and moving towards Jerusalem. Shortly after the death of the Prophet wasallam, something very mysterious happened in that part of the world that historians have chosen to bury. A tribe called the Khaza, Khaza, chose to embrace Judaism. And so the world witnessed for the first time the very strange phenomenon of a non-Semitic people becoming Jews, non-Semitic becoming Jews. The genetic research is available on the internet. Anyone can study it. You had conferences, medical conferences which were organized to study these people, the genetic composition. They had a genetic composition which was unique in all of mankind. No people in the world were like them. This is, this is scientific research. And these people, the Khaza, chose to convert to Judaism but they did so not for any religious reasons. They were not so much interested in the kitab <laughs> and to follow the law. They embraced Judaism for purposes of political expediency. They were sandwiched between Islam and Christianity.
Byzantine Christianity and they chose Judaism. These European Jews who have no racial, biological connection with the Banu Israel multiply. They multiplied and multiplied and breed it to such an extent that today nine or nine in every ten Jews in the world, ninety percent or more are European Jews. They outnumber the Semitic Jews by nine to one or ten to one. These European Jews if you look at the list of names of Nobel Prizes for science, for literature, would you name it? You will find that these are people who far exceed the rest of mankind in their intellectual brilliance, in their academic achievements, in their scientific research. They are a people different from the rest of mankind. And then you find that these Khaza who became Jews also chose to become Christians. So you have the Khaza infiltrating the camp of Judaism and infiltrate in the camp of Christianity as well. And from the ranks of these Khaza Jews and Khaza Christians, the emergence of the Jewish Christian alliance can be traced. It is this Jewish Christian alliance, Khaza, which eventually gives birth to the Zionist movement. The Zionist movement has absolutely nothing to do with Banu Israel. It is an essentially and an exclusively European achievement. It is these Khaza who having become Jews, first Jews and then Christians, who built an empire that was the most powerful in Europe and, and Central Asia. And when the armies of Islam had simultaneously defeated the two superpowers in the world, the Persian Empire and Byzantium and had emerged as the most powerful military force in the world. Khaza blocked our way. We could not defeat them. And so it would be quite correct to say that the Khaza demonstrated a military power without equal in the world at that time. It is from this part of the world that they spread out. They spread out to Eastern Europe, they spread to Russia, and eventually crossed the sea to the United States. And they are at the heart of the revolutions which transformed Europe from Christendom into modern Western civilization. They are at the heart of the Bolshevik Revolution in, in Russia, which overturned Christianity in Russia. They are at the heart of the French Revolution, in consequence of which the back of the Christian church is broken, the prohibition of riba is now consigned to the garbage bin. <laughs> and they are the heart of the 
part of the creation of the Zionist movement. It is these Khaza, Jewish and Christian, who now move to the Holy Land, assisted by a strange and mysterious Jewish Holocaust. And the history of that will one day be revealed on Judgment Day. How much was their input <laughs> into the Holocaust? Hmm? So that you have an exodus now of these European Jews to the Holy Land. When the state of Israel comes into being, who it is who controls power in Israel? Not the Oriental Jews, the darker skinned Jews. No, they are second class citizens. The ones who control power in Israel are the European Jews. What's your thoughts? Please be respectful with your comments. Also, please click the like, click the notification bell, and subscribe to this channel. Listen. Genesis chapter 11 verse 10 explains the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a black man in Africa. If you repeat this back, Genesis 14 verse 13, Abraham steps on the scene. Being a descendant of Shem, which is a fact, means Abraham too was black. Abraham, born in the city of a black man, called Nimrod, grandson of Ham. Ham had four sons. One was named Cain. Here, let me do some explaining. Abraham, Isaac was the father. Jacob had 12 sons, for real. And these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10, these were the children of Israel. According Genesis chapter 10. These were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10.